I came across a post on social media t- this morning, just a few hours ago, and it was interesting. It was about, you know, how this woman wished that when she had been in school, they had learned about race and all these other things and victimization and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And my first thought was, well, yeah, you know, I mean, that's, that's what's going on today. But then I thought back to my own education and I looked at, you know, where I came from and where I ended up. And I thought to myself, would I have gone further? Would I have done better if I had been taught the way we're teaching our children today? Let me just give you my baseline, my personal baseline. I didn't come from a a rich, well-to-do family. Uh, My father quit high school to go fight in World War II, never went back. So he didn't even have a high school diploma. My mother didn't go to college, let alone graduate from college. So we were, I guess you would say, lower middle class, working class, however you would want to define it. I did go to Catholic school for 12 years. And then I went to a state university and I got my PhD. Now, did I turn out pretty well? Well, I wanted to be an academic. I wanted to be a professor. That was my goal. And I managed to achieve that. I got my PhD before I was 30. It took me, it was a bad time to get out of school. It took me about 10 years to find a job, but I kept working and publishing and teaching on the side. And eventually I got the job in 1991. And by 1999, I had gone from an untenured assistant professor to a full professor with tenure and a chair of my department. When I retired, I was obviously a tenured full professor. I chaired three different departments over a 12-year period. I published 10 books, a score of articles, and brought in over a half million dollars in grants. Now, by any measure... I did well as an academic. I think the average production for social scientists in academia is under two books in a career. I published 10. So I did pretty well. Not everybody gets to be a full professor. Most don't ever get to be a chair of a department, let alone three departments. And not only did I do well in those terms, by my own goals. I mean, when when I was getting my PhD, I was hoping I'd get a job someday. I was hoping to get to associate professor. If somebody had told me, you know, you're going to, how many books I would publish and I would be a tenured full professor and and a chair before I left, I would have thought they were on crack. Now, if you assume that the progressive policies we're pursuing today are wise policies that are helping prepare our children for the future, then you would have to believe certain things about my education. I mean, when I went to school in Philadelphia, in a Catholic school, K through 12, I knew nothing about anti-Catholicism. I had no idea. I mean, most of the people I knew were Catholic. The kids I went to school were Catholic. Their parents were Catholic. I didn't know that there was, I thought most people in the country were Catholic, as far as I knew. That seemed to be my situation. I never had a clue until I got to college about anti-Catholicism in this country. I never had a clue until I got to college that there had been riots in Philadelphia before the Civil War, 1850s, against Catholics. Catholics had been killed. Churches had been destroyed. Convents had been burned down. I didn't know any of this had gone on. Now, if you believe in what progressives are doing today in education in this country, you would have to believe that if I had been told all those things in elementary and high school, I would have done even better. If I had grown up feeling as, that I was a, as a Catholic, I was a victim, I would have done even better. If only I had known, if only I had been prepared for the real world. I don't buy that for a second. I don't think, I think it probably would have hurt me. Instead of thinking I could do whatever I set my mind to do within, you know, whatever in, inherent internal capabilities I had, God given talents, however you want to explain it. I mean, that was what I thought. Catholics could be president. Kennedy was president. Yeah, they shot him, but, you know, 
that happens. Uh, I never felt like there were people out to get me. But I think learning about that would have made me think that. You know, when we were in grade school, we had our little religious processions and things, you know, Mary and Joseph and Christmas and Easter and all that. But we didn't have, you know, we didn't have teachers. Italian teachers would come up dressed, you know, in, in ethnic folk costumes and stand in front of a class. Or, or, or a, the Polish nun or a Polish teacher would, uh, a, a German teacher we had in, uh, I think, third grade, would show up in German folk dress to teach us. We didn't have like folk festivals where the Italian kids would dress like Italians, the Polish kids would dress like Polish folk uh, outfits, Germans would come in with their leader hosen. Uh, we did Czechs would come in with whatever Czechs wear in the old days. We didn't have any of that. We didn't do any of that. But if you accept the premises upon which progressive education is based today, had we done that in our school, I would have done even better. And I don't buy that for a second. If anything, I think I just would have felt more worried about going on into life and, and looking askance at anybody who looked cross-eyed at me. It wasn't until I started teaching that I realized just how bad some of the things had been. Because I'm not only am I a Catholic, I'm also of Sicilian heritage. It wasn't until I started teaching and I started researching because I had to teach about racism. I had to teach about slavery. I had to teach about all this stuff in U.S. history. And one of the things I had to teach about was lynching. It's an important issue. You got to talk about lynching, a century of lynching. And it wasn't until I started putting my lectures together for lynching that I started realizing that other than black people, people other than black people had been lynched. I didn't know that Jews had been lynched. I didn't know that Indians had been lynched. I didn't know that Asians had been lynched. And I sure as hell didn't know that Sicilians had been lynched. Nobody told me that. You know, nobody told me that, you know, 100 years ago in the, the city I live in today, two Sicilians were lynched. I didn't know about that. It wasn't until I was putting my own lectures together and I, I searched online, and it was Google or whatever search engine I was using at the time, you know, largest mass lynching in U.S. history. And it came out, it was New Orleans in 1891. There were 11 Sicilians lynched, killed, which is why we ended up with Columbus Day the next year to sort of sop off the Italians. If during my 12 years in Catholic school, we had the lynchiati, that's the 11 Sicilians who were lynched. They're referred to collectively as the lynchiati. If we had studied about them in grade school, would I have done better? I think I would have been scared crapless. If we, you know, memorized all the names of the 11 Sicilian men who were lynched, would that have helped me do better in my, in my life? If I'd grown up thinking, my God, I could be lynched? <laughs> really? I don't think so. I don't buy it for a second. If we had had processions, you know, and we all had to make, write poems about the names of the people, and the names are there, you can find the list. You know, whatever the guy's name was, it was a cobbler. You know, if, if I had had to write a poem in elementary school about what a wonderful guy he was and how he was innocent. I mean, if I had, if we had done that, we had had little make, the little paper doll things with each of a little lynchiati and dress them up in Italian folk costumes like my kids had to do with uh, African Americans and stuff when they were in school. And I, and we had, you know, memorial services for them, but they had portraits of them on the walls. You know, you'd walk down the hall and here are the 11 Sicilians, Italian Americans who were lynched. <laughs> Would that have made me go out into life and think, I can achieve my dreams. Or would it make me think, man, you know, the deck's really stacked against me. You know, they hate Catholics, they lynch Sicilians. I mean, what's the point? Do we really believe that teaching these kids that they're victims, that they're, they've been victims for centuries, is going to help them get ahead? I mean, unless you believe 
that if you know my teachers had dressed in ethnic folk costumes, I would have gone further in my career. Unless you believe that, then what we're doing to our children today in school makes no sense. Unless you believe that if I had learned about anti-Catholicism as a kid and had it drummed into my head year after year after year after year that as a Catholic there was all this antipathy and antagonism against me, unless you believe that, that I would have done better knowing all that than what I achieved, unless you believe that, then we're doing a disservice to our children. Unless you believe that, you know, learning when I was a, a six, the names of Lynchiati, singing poems or reciting poems about them or songs or having their faces hanging on the walls all over the schools that I went to as victims of oppression and hatred and race hatred. Unless you believe that, that knowing all that, I would have done even better than I did, then we're doing a disservice to our children today. I mean, it, it, it just makes no sense to me. I can't believe, you know, if I had gone to school and when I got to college and they said, you know, Mike, you're an Italian American. My advice to you is take Italian American studies. And I had focused on Italian American studies, read about Italian Americans, Italian American this, Italian American that, and focused on that. <laughs> and then what, get a job? teaching Italian history or something, limit myself to the kind of history I could teach, would that really have helped my career? No. If when I got to Temple, we had little dining areas where the student centers were that were reserved for Italian Americans as there were centers and areas resigned for African American students. I know because I bumbled into one once because that was the only seat I could find and I got tossed out. But if we had had a separate dining room, you had to be an Italian American to get in there. Would that have helped me in college? Would that have helped me deal with people at large, which is what I had to do when I got out of college, the vast majority of whom were not Italian Americans? Would that have helped? If your answer is no, then what the hell are we doing with any number of, of kids of ethnic origins today in this country. We're destroying them. You know, teaching people that they're victims, teaching people that the deck's stacked against them, doesn't help. It doesn't help you achieve because you see in front of you barriers that Sometimes they're there. They're real. I mean, I've had people say nasty stuff about Italians. I don't look Italian. My name's been changed. So they will dump on them. I've had it happen. It happened once with a girl I was dating. Her grandfather just cut loose on Italians and what a bunch of slime balls they were. So, I mean, I know these things are out there. I don't doubt that for a second. I know, you know, comments about, you know, when, uh, Mario Cuomo was around about being mobbed up or uh, Geraldine Ferraro connections with the mafia. I mean, I know all this stuff goes on, but it wasn't drilled into my head as a kid that I was carrying these burdens. And, and, and I think that's one of the main reasons I was able to achieve. I do not believe for a second if I had been weighted down as a kid with all this potential failure, it would have made me a better person. It would have made me more successful. I would have published, instead of publishing 10 books, I would have published 12 or 15 or 18, maybe 20. If only I had been told that Italians and Sicilians were lynched in this country. If only I had known that, I would have been, I would have been more successful. I would have achieved more. I would have been more productive. And I think we, we're destroying, I won't say we're destroying a generation of Americans. I think we've already destroyed the minds of a couple generations of Americans with this nonsense. 
And until it stops, it's just going to keep getting worse. And it's getting worse now, starting today, because today is the inauguration of President Joe Biden, and we know it's going to get worse in the schools. We know the pressures are going to be brought to bear. Everybody's got to learn about how they are a victim. And if I had learned about how Italians were victims, how Catholics were victims, I don't think I ever would have achieved the things that I did. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment. Like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.